My name is Wilbur Gunyer. I'm a musician, co-founder and CMO of Jive, the one-stop shop for local live music. The local live music industry has key three players. We have musicians, fans, and venues. Music defines atmosphere, and atmosphere drives bar sales in any city. However, booking and finding local live music is often time-consuming and expensive. We know of one bar here in Charleston that spends over $1,600 a week on just booking their live music, and they're not alone. For most new bar owners and managers, they don't have a Rolodex of musicians, so they end up hiring a booking agent as the most expedient way to fill out their calendar. For those who do not go through a booking agent, they have to juggle multiple communication tools, such as Facebook, text messages, emails, and phone calls, just to go through Spotify, or SoundCloud, or YouTube, or Bandcamp, just to get a sample of the artist's work. The industry is ready for a platform that streamlines the entire booking process. A single platform where anyone can discover, screen, message, book, and pay local live talent. Jive is that platform. We built a cross-platform mobile app which streamlines the entire booking process. Jive brings together all three key players of the live music industry and is available for download right now on the Google Play and iOS store. Here's how it works. Musicians create profiles and fill out information such as their location, instruments, genres, or style of music that they play. They can directly embed their music right into their profiles, and musicians can also create and form bands which are managed and booked exactly like a solo artist. Gigs are created directly in the app by venues. We created an artist auto invite system in which venues can invite multiple artists in preferential order. If the first one declines, Jive will notify the venue and automatically invites the next artist until the gig is filled. Push notifications keep users uh, updated about gig invites, any updates to current gigs or upcoming gigs. Musicians and venues display their public gigs on a calendar view. This can be viewed in a timeline or also in the calendar layout. Lagunitas, uh, pictured right here in the middle, had 24 gigs booked on Jive in the month of April. Each gig has details which includes the time, place, and which performer or performers are playing. The feed view displays all the upcoming gigs as well as which artists and venues are on the platform. Anyone can and should download the app right now to see what gigs are happening this weekend along with um, the solar eclipse coming up. No. Okay. So we charge a flat booking fee for bars that like to do the self-booking, and we also offer a premium service in which we do booking on half of the bars. Um, since we're compiling data about musicians and fans and their behavior, uh, we can provide a targeted advertising platform to third-party services such as bars, instrument manufacturers, beer and liquor distributors, and retailers. Oh, we're missing one slide. Uh, but I'll, uh, we're missing one of our slides, but I'll go ahead and tell the story. So the Cooper River Bridge Run is one of the most anticipated 10Ks across the southeast. Um, this past year, 32,000 individuals crossed the finish line downtown Charleston. John King Grill and Bar was left high and dry by their booking agent, who did not provide a musician um, the day before one of the busiest days in Charleston. So they used our platform to discover, screen, and book an artist with one hour the night before the event. Our team, though, however, is composed of myself, Brandon, Bueller, and Tyler. Between the four of us, we have over 15 years of music industry experience, as well as 11 years of software development experience. We are currently seeking uh, funding to expand our sales and marketing team, as well as to hire on additional developers. And thank you for your time. We are Jive, the one-stop shop for local live music. So do you have two apps, or is there a, is there a restaurant booking side and a consumer side, or is it all integrated within one It's all app. integrated right into one. So you can create a profile as a venue, and you can create a profile as a musician. And then multiple people can manage multiple bars. So what's, what is the kind of the consumer component? On the consumer component is the fans. So we're a B2B business insert, if you consider you know, an artist would be a business, because they're selling their product, which is their music, and to the bar. And then the B2C part is when we're advertising it to fans. So can you talk a little bit more about how you're reaching out to the fans? Because I mean, just kind of bringing it back to the business model, obviously there is a pain point in terms of being able to get these bookings done, but I think where you guys really could hit a home run is the reason that venues are booking music is so that they can get more people to spend money in the bar. Yes. And if you can show them that drive is driving, not only making the, the booking process easier, but driving more people 
in to put that credit card with the bartender, then I think you really got something. So I, what, what is kind of like the, the vision around that piece of the business? So the whole vision behind that is we want to create basically, expand out the fan profile to which they can you know, like and follow artists. So then we're sending them push notifications when their favorite artist is playing at their favorite bar and then be able to track that stuff and be like, well, when this band plays, you have 80 people show up on this night and normally your sales are, you know, reflect this. So that's definitely the long-term goal, but right now our focus is creating that interaction that is the content that the fans want to see. Can you go back to that pro to the setting up profile page? You had a couple that kind of looked the same, but... Um, yeah, so... Yeah, one of the biggest problems is when is is getting people to set up some new profile because they've done four other versions um you know could you not maybe put your could you not have two a band and a venue that is don't, don't know each other don't really know you and you can look you can build a build something that says okay i'm noticing that windjammer doesn't have anything on this day and i notice that um, at the same time i'm looking at this artist he's not He's, he doesn't have any gigs listed here and match them up without them ever creating a profile, just using the profiles they already have out there? So yeah, so that's why we allow them to display their gigs so that everyone can see their right. availability. That takes away the pain as a promoter, was a booking agent myself. Um, when you try to find people, you just email them and just wait for you know hours, even days for them to say, hey, I can't play. So when you can view their profile, you can match them up. They would be able to match themselves up to see who is available and saves that headache. Well, I'm saying, could you eliminate having them have to build a profile on your platform? So could you start matching them based on their Facebook or whatever, whatever profiles they already have? Then, then once you do that, right, on either side, now I'm more inclined to build a profile with you. You see what I mean? I, I kind of see what you're saying. But because the, the the, the bottleneck is, you know, how many people are going to actually go in there and fill this out on a, you know, on a national basis, right? That you, and so I think, I think the problem you're solving is a, a big one, but, you know, it's always just difficult to, to get somebody to create a profile on a, on a platform they don't know yet and they haven't seen a result yet. So what makes it very easy for us with musicians is since we do offer this premium service and we're actually in charge of booking for these bars, right. if they want to play, they have to have a profile. So it's not, it's not, oh, we have this cool idea, you know, get you more gigs. No, if you actually want to play in this establishment, you have to have a profile. So that, that's kind of the incentive for a musician. And is there any thought as to having sort of the retail channel, the, the, the actual customer drive, what, like, I'd like to see this band at that venue and, and sort of populate, like, a little bit to the, to the drive revenue question, or uh, is, is, is there any way to have sort of a uh, consumer input? You, you see what I mean? Like, yep. So one of our favorite sayings that our CTA says is anything is possible, it just takes development time. Right. Um, that's definitely something that we would love to do. Um, Kind of um, feeding off of um, that in a way, um, we want to add in a review system for you know fans can review the band, you know musicians and venues review each other, kind of like an Uber system to hold each other accountable. We also discuss you know having the fans review them to be like, hey, we really like for this this band to come back to this bar, or you know this band hasn't played here yet, why don't you have them play here? So I guess along those lines, so taking it to the longer term vision is is the the booking side of this going to be kind of almost incidental or foundational to the consumer side of the platform or is the vision to be more b2b in terms of kind of the focus for uh, new feature development and stuff like that well the main value is like you said is the consumers is if we're tracking their behavior and everything like that that is super valuable data um, now the whole B2B side though is the foundation because we have to create that interaction between the B2B for there to be something for the consumer to see. For example, bands in town is all they do is they post what shows are coming to the music farm. They don't facilitate that interaction between the two at all. So they're just an advertisement based model. We actually solve a problem. Do you get, does the, is there a, 
uh, is there an increase in revenue to the band or decrease in cost to the to the venue by having that sort of last minute dynamic interaction? Um, so like an emergency situation, kind of what you're saying? Or, yeah, yeah. So, um, so like, basically in an emergency situation, if somebody drops or something like that, um, it's really, it has been proven to be a very helpful tool to get somebody. What you're really risking in that sense is if you have people wanting to come to see this band and they don't show up, you're gonna have a lot of pissed off customers. And then you're, that's a lot, that's lost revenue. Cause they're gonna leave, they're not gonna stick around. They were there for the band. So that's definitely one of the values that we have. We cut back on times on behalf of the managers so that they can focus on more important stuff, you know, like actually running the bar instead of just focusing on it, on their live music, which takes about three to four hours a week doing it the old way. Um, so. How about you, audience? Any questions? Yes. A gig. Every gig, got it. Yep. And then the premium booking is what? So essentially we operate almost like a booking agent in which we book on behalf of the bar. So the bar tells us that they want this genre of music on this night, this is their budget, and we run with it. And then that's also what gives us the incentive to get the musicians on the app. Because they want to play at John King, they have to have a profile. Could you have it where bands could be like Let's say, like me and Sean started a band, we're not really well known, um, but we want to play at one game, right? But the Rap Roller Coaster is not, you know, big, have bigger bands. Mm -hmm. Could we do ads for you, like actual mobile ads, and actually appear like almost like in that feed? Yeah, that's something that we definitely could do and build out kind of um, what our intentional, um, our initial idea was kind of to never charge the musician, um, basically because we are an app made by musicians for musicians, and we're broke, and we understand that all musicians are broke, starving artists. Uh, but definitely something like that, um, it's been discussed, like, you know, maybe bringing, like, you know, they come up to the top of the feed or something like that, but. Or having musicians who are almost like where they're at Sears or something connected and they can sell their own band shirts. Yeah, yeah, we, we talked about having an in-app merch store as well. Okay, in the back, back there. Uh, yeah, so as somebody who's not an artist or a, you know, any manager, or just somebody who want to use it to, like, see, you know, put in Charleston, okay, it's Friday, like, what bands are playing where. Yep. Um, there's no like user profile for just like a, I guess, non fan. For a fan. So there's just, is it based on location? So is it, I guess, location sensitive? Yeah, so we're currently right now just built out of Charleston. Um, is all we need to do is put in geolocation and then we can scale to any city. Okay. Um, but yeah, essentially, essentially right now you see all the shows that are going on in Charleston. Okay. And then, but you know, once you guys have the geo, you know, system into it, you can be like, Yes. yes, exactly. So currently, if you go to another city, there's no way to find local live music. Um, the only way to do it is ask, you know, the concierge or the bartender at the hotel bar. Yeah. So this is kind of one last question right there. Did you talk a little bit about your attractions so far? Um, yeah, so we have almost 900 or I think over 900 users as of this week right now. Um, we have musicians signed up in over 100 cities. We have about 30 bars um, and we have five signed up for premium right now. So we're making almost right under $400 a week currently. So. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.